So we'll get started. The first thing we're going to do is turn the inside diameter. Usually these are turned on my big lathe and I use my Vic Mark to uh, start this. And I do the inside with the Vic Mark and the outside with the uh, small Nova. So the first thing we're going to do is you can see the fit on these is extremely tight. Cut on a CNC machine, uh, just an excellent job of milling these. I know, Steve. I'm, this is stainless steel. Who's got good hands? <laughs> Uh, copper. Yeah. Now the copper, if you look at my copper pieces, I did heat treat those, giving it some patina. You can also patina it and put uh, acid to it and it'll turn out even more colors. The problem is, and you'll see when we get into this, is we're going to turn the wood flat with the copper or stainless steel. So you're going to take some of that stainless steel and or copper off when you turn it flat. So you lose your patina and you can't reheat it. Uh, it's the one problem I've, I've had. I do seal those once I patina them with lacquer. What size is there? They run seven, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half, and I believe now he's got nines. 70% uh, of the bracelets sold in the United States are eights. That's a seven. Is it marked on there, Dick? Do you uh, have them uh, put your initials in it? I do have my initials and size put in them. I have an engraver that does that, and I can share with you how he does that, okay? Uh, laser dude there tried to do it, set up a jig, and wasn't able. Uh, the biggest problem I have is reorders. People don't remember the size they ordered. So I've tried to keep a record of it, but that's not easy to do, okay? So now they're uh, engraved with the size and my initials. Uh, it was too costly to put Campbell Studios in or that kind of thing, so I just went with my initials. Um, everybody knows where they bought them. All right, let's get started. I use carbide. The first thing we're going to do is take this I think this is an eight and a half. This will give me the inside diameter of what I have to turn this to. I've got to take a fair amount out of there. All right, back to it. Still got a ways to go. I'm going to... No, I'm not. I don't want to get too close to the, the chuck, okay? Uh, Yes, yes. No. It's not the best thing on carbide. Uh, carbide's pricey enough as it is. Okay. And I'm a little bigger than I need to be. I'll show you why shortly. Now we're going to go deeper.
Now I'm going to reverse this. Okay, I'm, you can see I'm just a little big. And, and you want that room because we need room for the glue. Now we're going to do the width of the bangle. Just to the point where I can move the, the bangle. Yeah, maybe 10,000. Yeah, again, you want, you want some place for the glue to go, okay? Now I'll set my calipers to the width of the bangle. This thing just isn't going to stay. There's my width. So I have a quarter of an inch to take off, and that's typical of the size bangle you get. And before I take it off, I like to take a look at, especially the choya. In, in many cases, the resin does not go all the way through. Uh, Steve may be able to see this, show it to you. There's not a lot of resin on the inside. If there is more resin on one side than the other, I'm going to leave that and take from the other side, saving as much of the resin as I can. You can see the resin here does not go all the way through here, okay? And I'm going to dish this out a little bit, again, giving me room to have a glue joint. This one, it's, it appears as though it's pretty equal going all the way around. So it's not going to matter which side I take the thickness from. And this, they both seem pretty flush. Still have a little ways to go. Pretty close. So what I'm going to do now is take it off the lathe, check it against the bangle, and when you tighten these, these don't have to be gorilla tight. This is not that strong of a wood. It's really not wood, it's fiber on the choya. Even on the stabilized wood or burls, don't over tighten them.
Okay, it's, it's too tight. I should be able to spin this. So I'm gonna take just a little more off. The dry fit, when you, you dry fit these, it's difficult at times to get them apart, so you don't wanna dry fit them too often. So take just a little more off. And then I'll clean up the inside. Take off just a little more. And again, if you look inside, you can see some tear out. Uh, again, you're, you're turning something that's very fibrous. It's like turning a hard sponge. So we'll CA glue that. Uh, it's, it's part of the new process that with the wood swelling, and you can see I've got quite a bit of movement in here now. All right, 16th of an inch or so. So we'll get a good glue joint on that. And you can see now inside, the bangle fits together the way it should. Hopefully it, it'll spin. Seeing it spins, it's, it's pretty loose. This may be the loosest one I've done. Uh, to glue it up, we'll take a degreaser uh, or any solvent to clean the inside of the bangle. I'm gonna grab another one. And if you look at the bangle, there are ever so small grooves at both sides of this. When you clean it, because it's been in the shop, it's got dust and dirt in it, make sure you clean all the grooves out. That's part of where the glue is going to adhere to. And we're going to use liquid nails. And then we'll glue this. Now, I don't have any degreaser with me, so we're not going to glue this one up. Uh, the degreaser just cleans it all up, gets everything out of the cracks and crevices, and allows you to get a good glue joint. When you glue it, don't be afraid to use a fair amount of glue. This is, I don't have a lot of clamps, and when I set out to make these, I make six at a time. So I went to just making my own clamp, clamping these up. Yeah, exactly. Huh, that's interesting. Who's got the key to the toolbox? I need to open that. Can you see if you can crack that open for me, Jim? Just a wing nut in the, uh, and we'll finish that Choya. Uh, the Choya is fun, it's pretty. It's got a lot of bling to it, and that's what makes it sell. Uh, when you glue these, there's gonna be glue that comes inside. You can see it here, okay? When you glue them up, don't, don't wipe the, try and wipe the glue out. Uh, it just kind of spreads around. It's a, it's a real thin film, where here you can peel it out and it's gonna come out like a rubber band, okay? Generally, you can get a grip on it and peel it out. And that's the easiest way to get it out, okay? Uh, this one seems a little harder today, I don't know why. You use liquid nails because it never sets up. It, it just stays in this 
plastic rubber form. So when your wood moves, it, it stays glued in place. If you used uh, CA, which most of us have in our shops, or almost all of us, it would become brittle. So when you start to turn this, it's gonna break apart from the stainless steel. Did you get it, buddy? Thank you. So I, I usually peel it out. Uh, I keep a carving knife around to pull that out of there. So this is what it looks like after it comes out of the press. So you've got it pressed. I usually leave them overnight, come back the next day, and this one peels out really easy. You have to peel this out before you chuck it so that you're, you don't have any bad spots. Something's gonna throw you off center. And I need to change chucks. For some reason, it doesn't want to seat. Yep. Now you can see the jaws are in here. Again, don't be a gorilla to tighten this down. It won't go any farther than the first seat, okay? So it doesn't have to be extremely tight. <clears throat> Now we're gonna turn the face down. At home, my jaws are a little deeper. So I have this, slide it in, push in against here. It helps hold it away from the jaws. So I have more room to work. Uh, this one, these seem a little short, so I'm not going to use that. And we'll go ahead and face this down. You don't have to flip that around. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I do because you, you try to get it correct, okay, as much as you can. But it is nicer not to have to be able to flip it around. Generally at home, I'd be turning much faster than this. Uh, here, I, it just... It's not necessary. This Choya is tearing badly. So what we're gonna do is CA it. Yeah, they are, and that's what caused that plastic to uh, catch the resin. Uh, it's not deep. Generally, you don't have to do this. Again, it could be lack of speed. Oh, that one's deep. I have had one failure where it blew apart. 
It was a Banksia pod at 30 bucks. Uh, I did salvage the pieces. I did glue it back together and get a finished piece. Yes, I will finish this with uh, CA glue. I'll go ahead and reverse it now. I set the key for that right. Thanks, Steve. Steve is being a great cameraman and an assistant today. So I guess I'll make much lighter cuts. I'm getting close now to the stainless steel. And I, I want a nice smooth transition. So you're gonna see a little bit of stainless steel come off of the tool. And you, you, you can cut it, It'll, it's fine. I'm gonna reverse it now and transition both sides together. There is some tear out. We'll fill that with CA. That's not bad. Now what I'll do now is take some sandpaper to it. There's a little bit of crown here on the top and we'll sand that back. So I'm gonna start with 180. Uh, because of the tear out that's in it, bring the crown down. Yeah, you are working close to the chuck. Two twenty. Three twenty.
Okay, now it's time for finish. I would probably take this at home to six or 800. Uh, I don't know that y'all are interested in seeing somebody sand. Also, when you do these at home, here I have a little bit of tear out, okay? That would get filled separately with CA thick, okay? I can feel that running my finger over it. Uh, there's some little holes here. I would also blow those out or take a uh, pin and actually pull the sawdust out of there. Uh, they'll show up as white spots in a dark area. White always shows up in a dark area. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put finish on here now. Uh, this won't be a gallery piece or a saleable piece, but I'd like to keep moving so you get the idea. Ah, uh, there it is, here's what I'm looking for. Uh, Eric, if you go to YouTube, Bangal Guy has seven videos on how to do this. Uh, he's probably much more thorough than I. This is medium, CA medium. And we're just going to put light coats of this on. Should do about seven or eight coats. Yes, you're going to get some on the stainless steel. We'll take that off uh, in the final coats. And you can see the color start to, to jump out. If you look on the top here, you can see the white dust marks. That's why I take those out. Uh, in a gallery piece or a jewelry piece, uh, to me they're a detractant. Uh, if you look here in the fibers, again you'd blow that out and that would fill with CA. I'll probably take this home, sand it back and redo it. But I wanted you all to see almost start to finish pretty much what I do. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it sticks to everything, Jim. <laughs> it seriously does. Uh, I'm sorry? I don't like to. Uh, accelerator at times will cloud your piece, okay? So if you get it on heavy and you hit it with accelerator, you can get a whitish color to it. I, I don't like to use it. And I did switch to the pump instead of the aerosol. I don't know what this stuff is, but I gotta be honest with you, when it's floating in the air, it, the aerosol stays there forever. Okay, now, we know we have CA finish on the stainless steel, so we gotta take that off. When you put your CA on, make sure you don't drip any inside of here. It's hell to get off. I've done it, and it was forever scraping it with the knife. It's, you can actually glue metal together with CA glue, and they adhere to each other. So once you get it on your piece, it's difficult to get off. I will use accelerator on it now. I'd, and then we're gonna take off the glue. Now the lighting's not the best. 
But there you can see the CA coming off. And I'll run that around the edge. And that cleans up the majority of the CA. There's some right here. So I would take my pocket knife or this. So you can see the CA coming off. I'll get in as tight as I can against the choya. Now Eric does this with the lathe running quite fast. Eric's much younger than I, so his eyesight is much better. That's not too bad. I'll reverse it. You know, there's a lot of finishes you can use. Uh, it's whatever you're comfortable with. Much of the time I use a pocket knife doing this or a dental tool. And you can see there's a little bit of stainless coming out of there right now. There's some there. So this one's pretty good. Now we'll sand it back. At this point, it would get buffed. Uh, I would take micro mesh. Uh, it's down in the car. Uh, I'm not going to micro mesh it, but it, this gives you a real good idea of what happens and how quickly you can make one of these. Uh, I'll put one more coat on here of CA. Is micro mesh like batch break? Yeah, but it comes in thousands. It's terribly fine. Yeah, I, yeah. And you do it dry, okay? Micro mesh dry. Uh, again, you don't want to wet this down or, or get any dampness to it. Uh, so once this is buffed, and, and here, the resin and, and the white in there or the reflective area is my, uh, micro powder. And that's what makes it glow. So the more you polish this, the more you buff it, the better it's going to brighten up. Take this off. It should be. I don't want. And you can see there as it gets wet what it's like. And that, that's the type of finish you'd have on it when you're done after you use micro mesh, Triple E, and Hutz polishing. Hutz polishing is what you use on acrylic pens. And you can see the inside needs cleaned up. I hope my customers that I invited aren't watching and see how easy these are to make. Uh, honestly, this isn't any more difficult than making a pen. You know, just like an acrylic pen, you would now polish that and buff it, and, and you've got a nice piece of jewelry. Uh, and that's why I went and had the size uh, engraved in there and also my initials. I, you know, I've got some repeat customers on these, and, and it's been fun. Comments, questions? Uh, it's listed on his Facebook page. It's not a lot, George. Uh, if you compare these, uh, let's see. Remember, eight is the largest seller. Yeah. That's uh, two and a half. Uh, 
that's uh, just over three, uh, two and three eighths, okay? So you know, there's a, there's a fair amount of uh, difference in these. Uh, when you stack them up on top of each other, that's how you can keep track of the sizes because they're not engraved, okay? Uh, eighth inch, eighth inch, okay. And that's a size eight and a half, I think you have, Jim. That's either an eight or eight and a half. Uh, I ha I'm gonna order some nines. I've had a couple of men who would like these kind of bracelets. Uh, they're a good seller. Uh, Eric treats you well. Uh, he knows that you're gonna blow up a piece or two. So when you order a dozen of these, you can expect generally a, an extra blank. Any other questions? They're fun. Is that a medium CA then? That's medium CA, yeah. Uh, generally now when I start doing these, I will take that choy and I'm gonna soak it with CA thin. It will help stabilize the tear out that's in that one. That's, that's got a, a little bit of tear out. And again, if you blow out the dust from the fibers and then fill it with CA medium, let it set, it, it'll be smoother. I, I didn't check to see how smooth or rough that one was. Uh, generally, you can get these really smooth. Yes, sir. You, you probably take it for granted, but your source of the finding. Yes. Where, where do you get that and, and the wood? Bangleguy.com. Okay. He, he supplies me with both. Now, he doesn't supply me with the alabaster. And he wasn't aware of the alabaster turning until I finished it the day before yesterday. And he has interest in that. Um, I don't know whether he's going to carry it or not. But it's bangleguy.com. If you're on Facebook, it's Wild Wood. Wild Wood. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.